Hey everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another episode of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions about Photoshop Elements. Today's question comes in through our Facebook page, and I'm actually going to do double duty here. I'm going to answer two questions in one tutorial. First question is from Alex, and Alex is wondering how he can graduate a photo's opacity. Uh, left to right, top to bottom, those kind of things. And then Anita, uh, right after Alex, asked, how do I use layers to put one photograph over another? Uh, so I'm actually going to do one tutorial. I'm going to show Anita how to add a photograph on top of another and blend them together using layers and layer masks. And as part of that, I'm also going to answer Alex's question on how to graduate photo opacity. So let's get started. I've got a couple photos opened in the Photoshop Elements Editor. Let me show my photo bin. Uh, I've got one of my daughter, Alyssa, and I've got one of myself. We were down in San Diego uh, at this kind of Japanese garden place. Uh, not a lot of people around. We wanted a picture of both of us, but since there was nobody there, we each took a picture of the other one. So I'm going to blend these two pictures together using Photoshop Elements layers and layer masks. And the way I do that is first I uh, open up my what's going to be my background picture. I'm going to use this picture of Alyssa. And then from my photo bin, showing all of my currently open photos, I just drag this picture of me and drop it on top of the picture of Alyssa. Now you can see over on the right in my layers panel, let me highlight that, right? This is my layers panel. And if this is not showing, just make sure the layers icon down here in the bottom right is selected. And I've got my original background layer, the picture of Alyssa, and then I've got another layer I just added on top of that, which is the picture of me. I'm gonna double click uh, the layer name here and just uh, rename it to Bob so I can uh, kind of remember which layer is which. And now what I want to do is hide parts of this layer so I can see parts of the layer that's underneath showing through. Um, I can hide the whole layer by clicking this little eyeball icon right here, right? I can, I can temporarily hide that layer. I can see that underneath the layer is this picture of Alyssa. I can show that layer again. Um, but of course, that's not the results I want. Uh, I want to selectively hide parts of this layer and show other parts of the layer. And the way I do that is with something called layer masks. And so before I create my layer mask, what I actually have to do is create a selection. And so over here on the left in our tool panel, this little uh, icon right here, these are some of our selection tools. I'm going to click on that. And then down in the bottom, I'm going to click on tool options. And you can see all the different options for our primary selection tools are all right here. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. I'm going to make sure it's in add mode. Uh, and that's really kind of all I have to set up. Come over here on top of my picture, uh, hover the mouse over me, and just start dragging. And you can see as I drag across uh, me in the photo, the quick selection tool searches for edges and does some automatic edge detection and selection. So we've got the marching ants uh, all around me uh, based on uh, the edge detection stuff that the quick selection tool did. Now, it didn't do real good down here around my lower back. It got some of that. If I hold my uh, Alt or Option key, depending on whether I'm uh, on Windows or Mac, hold the Alt or Option key down and drag over an area where I don't want it selected, and I'm subtracting from the selection. So I want to fix this area up uh, kind of underneath my hand. I want to fix this area up underneath my other hand. Uh, look around, oh, kind of missed right here, so I'll let go of my Alt or Option key. And now I'm back in Add mode, and I'll just kind of fine tune things along uh, my hair. Uh, check around my back. Okay, it's all looking pretty good. So now, oops, my shoulder there. I actually want that part as well. Uh, so I'm going to drag that. Okay, now I've got a nice selection of me in this photo. And the next step is to add a layers mask. This button right up here, let me highlight that, this uh, square, this blue square with a, a clear circle in the middle, uh, that's how we add a layers mask. And all you do is click it. And what happens is a layer mask gets added. That's what this extra icon is over here. And depending upon what I have selected, inside the layer mask is either filled with uh, white pixels or black pixels. And based on the selection inside the selection, we automatically filled with white pixels. 
Outside the selection, we automatically filled with black pixels. And the way layer masks work is wherever you paint with black pixels, that layer is transparent. And wherever you paint with white pixels, that layer is opaque. Uh, let me hide the other layer of Alyssa so you can see what's going on, right? So where we had made our selection uh, in our layer mask, we have white pixels and I can see that layer. Wherever we did not have a selection, we've got black pixels and uh, that part of the layer is hidden. It didn't actually get erased, it just got hidden. Um, so if I had made a mistake or I come in and I find an area that maybe uh, I, I had selected incorrectly, I can just grab my uh, paintbrush tool, either paint with white or black. So I'll just go paint maybe a smaller brush than that. I'll just go paint some white over here and you can see I can bring that layer back just by painting a white blob uh, on my layer mask. I don't want that of course, so I'm gonna switch to paint with black and I'm gonna come back and paint black on my layer mask uh, to temporarily hide that section of the layer. So that's how I composite two photos together using layer masks. Uh, let me rehide the underlying layer. Now I might wanna adjust some size a little bit. Let me zoom out because I actually wanna make myself a little bigger. Uh, you can see when Alyssa took the picture of me, she was standing a little further back than I was when I took the picture of her. So proportionally, I'm not sized right. I'll just use my move tool, uh, click on me, grab one of the corners and drag it up. Uh, you know, I don't want to be huge, Monster Bob. Uh, I want to be sized kind of appropriately. And maybe I don't want to be too close to her, or maybe I want to be closer, right? You decide with your photo exactly how you want things to line up. Maybe I'll move myself down a little because I'm not actually that much taller than Alyssa. And maybe just a little bit bigger, maybe a little over to the left. And once I'm done resizing and positioning things, this little green check mark will go ahead and commit those changes and render my image. If I double click on my hand tool up here in the top left, it'll resize to fit my window. Uh, and you can see now I've got a nice uh, composite image uh, using layers and using layer masks. Now, uh, I mentioned I was trying to answer two questions at once with this tutorial. So back to Facebook. So we just helped Anita learn how to um, put one photograph over another. That was what she was looking to do using uh, masks and layers. But Alex is looking to learn how to graduate the photo opacity, right? Back here, uh, I kind of go from um, visible to invisible in a very uh, quick step fashion. Uh, but maybe we wanted a more graduated uh, transition from one photo to the other. And we do that with layer masks as well. But instead of painting uh, with our brush tool, either black or white, we would use our gradient tool. And so that's this tool right here. Go ahead and click on that. And down in our tool options, there's lots of different gradients you can pick from. Uh, you probably want to use this very first one, which is a gradient from our foreground color to our background color. So go ahead and click on that. Make sure that's selected. Uh, over here on the right, make sure your layer mask is still selected. And then just drag across your photo. And so what it does is where I start dragging, it paints with black. And where I finish dragging, it paints with white. And then it does a nice blended gradient between the two. So I can drag left to right, and I get a look like that. I can drag right to left, I get a look like that. Uh, top to bottom, something like that. Bottom to top, I can even do it at an angle. And depending upon how far I drag, if I drag a long way, then the gradient is uh, smooth, right? Covers the whole area I dragged. If I drag a very short distance, then the gradient is very short. So the amount of gradient from white to black is dependent upon how far you drag. And of course the angle is dependent upon how you, which angle you drag your mouse at. So I could blend these two photos together uh, using a gradient in a similar fashion. Let me reshow uh, the layer underneath so we can see Alyssa. And I can start to blend these two together as well. Now, you know, this isn't the way I would do this because, uh, you know, the photos weren't exactly lined up. You can see the, the railing behind me is in a different position than the railing behind Alyssa. But if you've got your photos uh, exactly lined up and, you know, you took them with your camera on a tripod or something like that, uh, a technique like this might work. But you can also start with a gradient in uh, your uh, layer mask. 
and then come in with your paintbrush and start painting with either black or white uh, to hide things as well. So let me get Alyssa's finger showing by painting with some black. Uh, let me hide the railing uh, kind of there. Let me hide the railing behind myself by painting in black. Uh, kind of like that. So it's not as precise as a selection as we used in the first technique, um, but the results are kind of the same, right? I've blended from one photo into the other with some softer gradients between the two. So hopefully that helps you guys understand uh, how to blend two photos together uh, and actually set the uh, opacity of a photo using a layer mask. Um, if you're not, uh, Alex, if you're not using two photos and trying to do this, you're really just trying to blend a photo, then you would just do something like this. Again, back to your gradient tool, click on your layer mask and, and just do some dragging to kind of create that graduated opacity look of your photo. All right. Uh, hope that helps out. Uh, and thanks for asking the questions on our Facebook page. Uh, anytime you have any other questions, feel free to come back and post them for us. And uh, you never know, we might do another tutorial for you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.